This is my beginning segment for a project I want to start. Uh, I'm going to make four sets of hollows and rounds. The sizes are one quarter, three eighths, seven sixteenths, and one half. And uh, what I went ahead and did was I made a little drawing that illustrates somewhat the theory behind the sizes, uh, the mathematical concept behind hollows and rounds. So I'll zoom in on this little diagram and hopefully that uh, that helps everybody understand the concept. So what we have is a circle and for purposes of this illustration this is a two inch diameter circle right through here and this radius is two inches and along the circumference of the circle if you take the same compass setting I use the compass to draw the circle so if you go two inches across the circumference of the circle and then you connect that point back to the center of the circle you have a, an equilateral triangle and this distance across here is also two inches and this arc is one-sixth of a circle this is a 60 degree angle it's one-sixth of a 360 degree circle and this is the principle that determines the bottom of a, um, a hollow and a round so I built I designed and built a device that cuts the blank to this shape and it's precisely 60 degrees of arc so you'll see in the rest of the video how that device operates. Okay, I'm going to shape the bottom of a hollow plane. Uh, the blank is trimmed to size. Um, I built the device over a 50 inch jointer plane which is upside down that's the blade I'm using to cut the bottom and uh, I did three of them already and they came out very nice so I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one I'm just gonna do a little bit of it just to show how this thing works and then uh, I'll show the finished product later on in another section of the video but basically the way it works is the blank is held in the jig and the blank rotates. The stops are set 30 degrees from the center. So 30 degrees this way, 30 degrees this way. That gives me the arc that I need on the bottom of the plane for the, uh, for the hollow. That's the way they're set up. So uh, basically what I do is I push it and as I push it I slowly rotate rotate the blank through the 60 degrees of arc and that shapes my bottom so it's a pretty simple setup and it's based on the mathematics that are needed for the, um, the individual hollow that you're shaping so this is an adjustable jig and I've gone ahead and done a, a one quarter hollow, a three eighths hollow, a half inch hollow and now this is a seven sixteenths hollow and uh, the way it's set up I had to locate a line on each end of the blank that was seven thirty seconds from the edge and it took me a little time to get that. I found something that I could use as a spacer that was precisely 7.30 seconds. I went ahead and laid it out and now I have everything I need. So this registered now up against the bottom of the plane. So I'm at zero and I'm at all the way to one side. So now as I sweep it so I'll move it a little bit. I'll start to, what I do is move it in this direction now 
and I'm going to rotate the blank into the blade just a little bit and make another cut. I did notice on the uh, first three that I did, sometimes the shavings get jammed up a little bit. And if they're in a strategic location, they'll lift the jig. And then it will produce an error. The jig has to be set firmly against the bottom of the plane, which is upside down. That's that's how this works. So now I've created a little space right here. It's beginning to rotate back this way. So I'm, um, let's say, ten or fifteen percent of the way through the arc. Uh, set very shallow so the cut is really fine and uh, it's not too much effort to push but it's very repetitive this is the jig that I use to set up the uh, the tapered pocket for the uh, for the wedge so what I do is I have this angle set for the angle of the blade that I want and this is the way the other side of the the other side of the jig it just looks like this it's very simple and what I did was I glued a block of wood onto here and that represents the back of the pocket and then I use a quarter of an inch chisel and I pulled it against the edge of the wood and I come down and I go in until the back of the chisel hits the top of the jig and that if I set this one up right here I go in roughly half an inch then what I do is I switch it for a shorter jig <coughs> set up the same way same angles same configuration same block of wood only this is about three quarters of an inch shorter so I set it up again and that allows me to go in about oh I'm gonna say altogether probably about an inch and a quarter but what happens is after I do that I make this cut I used a hacksaw to get this cut right here and then this cut and I clean all this out with chisels and everything and then at that point this internal pocket is only about a half inch from from everything that I'm doing through this opening so I come in with a drill bit and I connect this area and the pocket and uh, then I start opening it up with my uh, plane makers floats my rasps the chisel itself whatever I need to do to open that up so that's what I did and then the other thing I did once I was at that point I have a very heavy block <clears throat> that I milled uh, it's very square and what I did was I clamped this down and then I did some pairing to get this face flat this plate this face right here is the ramp for the blade this has to be square to the faces of the plane and it has to be very flat the reason why is because at the bottom especially at the bottom if there's any space you'll have chatter and that'll affect the the uh, quality of the cut 
Um, the other thing is that if it's not straight, you'll have a hard time with the wedge. So one of the ways of testing the wedge is to, <clears throat> without the blade, just put the wedge in and it has to fit pretty darn tight. Uh, I went ahead and made a bunch of jigs. I made three jigs. Uh, three other jigs besides the ones to cut the uh, <clears throat> to cut the angles for the chisels. So this is just a kind of like a I guess you would almost call it a shooting board. So I have some maple stock and what I'll do is shorten this a little bit, cut it in half and then I'll just use this to flatten it <clears throat> and get it real close. Um, then I'll shoot the edges or shoot one edge and uh, square it up and then once I have it um, where it's on an angle and I want to start dialing it in and customize it to each pocket that I've cut then I'll go ahead and slip it into this jig and I also have a pair of micrometers and what I can do is then shave this <clears throat> and uh, really dial it in. And then <clears throat> I took this pattern off a plane I made a few years ago. So what I'll do is keep everything that I make the same wedge style. I like it. It's kind of generic. But uh, it, the thing that I like about it is I can grab it with the hammer here and uh, release the wedge that way. So I went ahead and put a uh, little taper on it over here for the <clears throat> for the uh, chips. So that's the the jig for that. And you have the shooting board. And what else do we have? Okay, we have one more. This is another shooting board and this is to adjust you can see this is the line, this is the back of the wedge, this is the, what I would call the straight side that runs against the blade and then this is the tapered side that intersects the grain lines. So what I went ahead and did was made basically a shooting board but just for the taper. So as I, as I uh, try and dial in this angle so that it fits the pocket properly I have a dedicated shooting board just for that just for this taper um, I had to make all these yesterday took a little bit of time but uh, the rest of it should go a little bit faster uh, this is my layout let's see we'll show you a layout for for the uh, the next one, I got my escapement side here laid out. I got my bed angle, uh, the wedge, the wedge angle. I got my my uh, pocket laid out at the top. Um, let's see. This is the this is the next one. This is the three eighths. So it would look like this is the three eighths. That came off the jig that I showed in the first part of the video so it's really no big deal it's pretty simple so we'll go ahead and do that and uh, I have all the blades laid out already let me give you a shot of what that would look like I'm doing four molding planes at one time but this gives you an idea I have a two and a half inches of uh, the working end of the blade and then it comes through here and goes all the way up to where the wedge would be and then it stops and then there's another one right here nested around it so there's a scrap there's a piece of scrap right in the middle here and that'll eliminate a lot of waste so in a space of like 12 and a half inches I'm getting two blades um, it's the most efficient way of using the steel. 
Um, if money was no object, I would just whack it at nine inches and take it out, and then I'd have a whole bunch of waste, and I just toss it or whatever. But um, I'm able to actually get quite a bit more by doing it this way. It is a pain in the neck, though, because you have to get in here, and without overlapping these cuts, you have to make turns. So I'll do this when I set up a grinder outside and do all this grinding and then do some more work with hacksaws, the files, the sharpening stones, etc, etc, to dress all this up so that it's um, <clears throat> appropriate for each plane. So, and then what I'll do is um, <clears throat> I'll do the first, the four hollows first then I'll do uh, some hardening and some tempering and get those all sharpened and tuned up and then I'll create the um, the shapes for the rounds and then I'll do all those blades and uh, harden and temper those and then I'll use the new set of hollows and rounds to make four molding planes and then I'll do some more it's just it's going to be kind of like a multi-stage never-ending trilogy of projects but in the end it'll all make sense so it's a lot of hand work very time consuming I can't stay here and do hours upon hours and hours of work but um, I'm getting a lot done and I'm very happy with the progress overall especially the quality I'm not a pro at this this is just kinda like a a hobby but it's working out pretty good so uh, we'll see how it goes I'm cutting the escapement now and I have this nice large block set up it's already been squared this is the scrap from a previous plane that I made so I know it's already been squared up and it's clamped to the blank on my layout line and then what I do is I run the uh, the back saw down to the depth I want to the front so it's it's on an angle it's not it's not all the way across it's just a very shallow cut but it establishes the line and then I'll take away all this and start to mortise it out with the chisels uh, I'm in about an inch an inch and an eighth uh, from the top with the jig that I created so I'll connect this mortise and the other mortise with a drill bit and then open everything up but this is a setup for the back saw and uh, the idea is that this cut plunges down into the blank at a 90 degree angle so that when I fabricate the wedge and put the blade in there that there aren't any twists because it's just a big hassle to try and correct all that if it doesn't come out straight so that's how I do this I'm going to cut the bevel on the side of the plane now. So uh, it's a good time for me to use the uh, coffin plane that I made. The bevel is laid out in pencil. The bevel really defines the bottom of the plane. Uh, it could be at almost any angle, and truthfully, you almost don't need it at all, uh, depending on how you use the plane. Uh, I think there might be some situations where it uh, might be in the way. This, this part of the plane might be in the way. So I'm not going to complete this. I'm working on the uh, pocket for the blade and the wedge right now and uh, what I went ahead and did was uh, when I get to when I get to the point where I join the um, the escapement to the wedge pocket what I like to do is I like to have the blade all ready to go so I cut this polished the part that was cut out of the raw stock 
So this one is ready to go. I used a micrometer to get these two edges parallel. Came out very nice. And I also what I noticed was on the first one and this one a little bit as I clamped it uh, to do my work, got a little bend in it. You have to make sure that the entire blade is straight because you'll just be fighting the bend in the blade uh, as you do all your fitting. And then what I do is I slip it in there and uh, then I can just see. And the other thing I can do is because this is the factory edge on the blade is I can use it as a straight edge inside the wedge pocket. So if it rocks that means there's a high spot. You can have a low spot somewhere in the in the pocket that's not the end of the world but you can't have a high spot because then uh, you'll you'll have a space and the wedge and the blade won't fit right. So I start start fitting the um, the sides of the of this long mortise by using the metal itself and uh, I have the I can use the chisel at this point you can use the chisel you can use the plane makers floats and I also have the backward tooth um, sawzall blade I put a little dummy handle on it so it won't jab my the palm of my hand and then very slowly take out all the high spots and um, that's about it it's 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 tedious but this is going I'd say almost at least a third to a half again quicker than the first one I also set up a little jig on the table to clamp it it's only being held down by one clamp the rest of the clamps are just to capture it and I have a little wedge here to keep it from bouncing so it's just to trap it in in this area so that when I machine it it doesn't flip around like I said it's tedious but um, as you get into it it's it just the details reveal itself and the main thing is to discipline yourself and keep all this in a straight line and keep all your cuts square because if you have an error like if you go back too far with a cut then the only way you can correct it is either to leave the defect in the plane or else take everything and move it all back and it's very difficult to move all this back even like a 64th or a 32nd of an inch so your tolerances are pretty small um, now what I'm going to do is I have some stock uh, available for the wedge so what I'll go ahead and do is uh, start working on that take this all apart because I need this area to work on and then I'll go to the wedge and I'll start mating the wedge the blade and the plane all together at once because I'm at that point right now and uh, after that I'll start shaping the blade to the uh, profile for the for the hollow and uh, this one will be done for this stage and I'll go to another one and that's it that the, the heat works on the steel. The transformation doesn't take place immediately. It's not a visual process. It's a, a molecular process. So I'm letting that transformation take, take place. Slightly better. 
I opened up the mouth of the plane slightly. I just paired it on an angle with the chisel. I'm pretty close with this. I got a lot of it. I just want to get a couple of smooth passes. So I could leave it and then use that cut as the the bottom of the of the new plane. Let's see how it looks. That's like that's actually not too bad. I think that'll do. There's a little, there's a little nick in here. I don't know if it's worth trying to get that out. Unfortunately, the, the tighter I hold it against the fence, the more force I, I, I give the, uh, I work against the chip. And it's got no place to go, so it just jams up. It just curls into a ball and locks up like a rock. And then it stops the cut. So I really can't even make more than like one pass. And there's just not any extra room in there. I think that's good enough. So now I'll do all the layout for the uh, for the four planes and uh, start on the uh, pockets for the wedges, the escapements, and all that other good stuff. So I'm like roughly halfway through. Um, once I get all the wedges roughed out, then I'll cut them all at one time and sand them all at one time. I have a few I didn't complete. Uh, there's no sense in me doing uh, doing those one one at a time. So I'll just wait until I have like all eight of them, and I'll mess with them all at one time. But so far so good. It's very um, very stressful because I have no extra material. If for some reason I create a failure in one of these blanks, uh, I'm pretty much sunk. I gotta go like back weeks worth of work to rough out another block, mill it, sand it, to, you know, just it's it would be an enormous setback. So uh, every step I take, I'm stepping into the unknown. I've never done this before. Uh, I have really crude setups, and I have no extra material. So. I'm moving along, but I'm moving along real slow. So I'm about 45, 50% done right now.
we'll keep going. Um, the final stages of this project. Here you see a complete round plane. The bottom of the plane was cut by the hollow, which is the, uh, the corresponding size. And uh, what I found here was that I was able to use, uh, this is my setup for how I cut the hollows and rounds that did the, the, the work on the blades. I have a drill bit with a little grinding stone on it and I have a bunch of different sizes and whatever radius I needed for each corresponding blade I went ahead and changed it and then I used that that setup and that drill to cut the uh, to cut the curve in the blade and then the opposite ones so this would be uh, what I what I'm choosing to call a round and this was actually pretty easy and then with the hollows that's the outside shape they're a little bit easier to fabricate and I just used diamond stones and the grinder and stuff like that and I did all the hardening and everything so um, what I did find and what I recommend to anybody that uh, that makes hollows and rounds is you have to fit the blade very carefully because what will happen is if you have let's say inside inside the hollow you have a high spot on the blade that's gonna make it harder to complete the cut you, it's gonna require more force to push the plane through the wood and you're probably gonna get a funny cut and what I also noticed is that because uh, let's see I want to try and in, uh, in illustrate uh, my concept when you have a uh, a flat bottom plane with a straight blade when that blade intersects the wood it creates a shaving that's basically a coil and it's it's being cut in one dimension and if you look if you theoretically look at all your uh, lines of grain that would be in your wood as the blade passes through those lines of grain um, it folds up and curls the shaving but now in a hollow or a round you're not peeling the wood away in one direction you're peeling the wood away in two dimensions because there's a curve this way and then there's also the other curve the other way as you pass down the board so that's why you get shavings that look like this. They're kind of like folded in on themselves. Uh, as you can see, this, this doesn't unroll in a straight line because it's been, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a, a one dimensional shape that came from a two dimensional cut. So these planes inherently uh, expend more energy to push through more lines of grain in the board and produce this kind of cut because as the blade is coming through the board it's it's doing more work it has to be a sharp blade and it has to be set as fine as you can make it which means that you have to you have to do a little bit extra work to shape that blade so that it makes a fine cut. So your obligation is to fabricate the blade so it makes a fine cut and then you have to set the blade so that it makes a fine cut because it does you no good to do one without the other and uh, then they work really nice. So that's a heads up to anybody that makes a hollow or a round you have to spend the time fabricating the blade properly and then setting it properly and uh, what I also learned was that um, when you're initially setting the iron in the plane I hold it with the the nose of the plane facing me and I hold the blade the blade in place and sight down the plane 
but eventually once you start dialing it in what you almost have to do is set the blade up as if you were going to make a cut with it you have to install the wedge and force that blade into its final position and then determine by eye how much you have to take off for instance it might be just a little bit on one side and then disassemble the entire plane remove the iron take it to your grinding station grind that small portion of the blade away hone it again take the burr off and then reinstall it in the plane set it up completely tap it with your hammer go through the whole thing again it's very tedious very time consuming but once you dial it in you got it and then you can make a real cut a nice cut real easy and you won't have any problems and when you do that with your hollows you'll be able to cut the rounds very nice and that's what I was able to do here so these these bottoms by doing it the way I did it which is to use the machine to make the hollow and then use that finely made hollow to make these rounds you'll have you'll have yourself a nice set of planes that cut a really good crisp shape uh, it could be done other ways I'm sure but that's the way I chose to do it and also the way I was able to sharpen the blades with the drill bit I'm starting off with a curved stone so um, the other thing I used to uh, finalize some of the shaping was I have a set of uh, slip stones that I keep in a tub of water and I was able to take the burrs off and do some final shaping but um, these are not super fine it's not I didn't make a big deal out of honing it with a really uh, high grit stone I didn't get into any of that but I did pay attention to how this the, the blades were shaped and set and they cut really nicely so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do all the final little details on the perimeter of these planes uh, later on when I get the molding planes done I will do these eight planes and the other four planes all at once I'll put a radius around here and dial them up and do all the final sanding all at one time but for all intents and purposes these eight planes are fully functioning the blades they're complete all right this is it the end of the project so This is four of the planes that I just finished. And I got my scrub plane that I used, handmade. I made that sitting on top of the massive jointed plane that I used at the beginning of the project. I got my stamped hollows and rounds all sanded and shaped and ready to go this is my other coffin plane that I used for this project and then the business end of the massive joint of plane all handmade solid maple coming back into the other four hollows and rounds you're looking at the front end of of these these are the uh, the number sevens and the number eights they're all stamped on the back and then this is the whole family of planes so that's uh, let's see one two six ten that's eleven handmade planes right there